Hello, this is LK Math. This is the first of hopefully uh, many videos on the topic of uh, writing and proof in mathematics. And so, um, here's the book I'm using, Mathematical Reasoning, Writing and Proof by Ted Sundstrom. This book is under the Creative Commons license, so I'm free to use it or adapt it to instruction. Uh, as I knew, you are also able to use it personally, um, you know, so long as you give credit to the other and stuff like that. And so, uh, if you uh, want to take a look at the license, there's a link here. And so you can find this book online but just by typing the title into uh, Google or some other uh, search engine. So with that, let's get started. The first thing that you uh, talk about in uh, a proof writing class would be statements. And so it's important to know what a statement is because that's what we're going to be talking about the majority of the time. You're going to be talking about proving statements false, proving them true, and so on. So a statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. And so let's take a look at the examples below here. We have uh, the first one. The sky is beautiful. Is this a statement? Well, no, because the sky is beautiful. That, that's a matter of opinion. Mathematically, it's not something that we can assess the truth value of. Maybe in a philosophy course, you can talk about whether or not it's true that there is you know, inherent beauty in the uh, there's some inherent beauty about the sky, but in mathematics, uh, we're not going to go there. So there's there's no truth value that we can really assess here. It's a matter of opinion. The second one, is it raining? And that is a question. It's not a statement. And so there's no there's nothing to determine to be true or false. So um, not a statement. 3x plus 5 is equal to 11. This, again, is not a statement. So we have no, no. And then, no, not a statement, um, simply because we don't know what x is. So there's, there's no way to determine whether this expression is true or false, or this equation is true or false. So there's, uh, there's nothing here to assess as far as truth value. And so um, it's not really saying anything. The next statement is, or the next uh, one is a statement because we could we can test and see whether this is true or false. It says 5x plus 1 is equal to 11 where x is equal to 3. Well, is that true? Well, we can say, okay, 5 times 3 plus 1 is equal to 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16. 16, which is not equal to 11. So this is a statement, but it is a false statement, but it's a statement nonetheless. The next one, there exists a real number x such that 3x plus 5 is equal to 11. This, again, is a statement. It's saying that there is a real number x such that 3x plus 5 is equal to 11. We can prove this to be true or false. Um, and so I imagine by looking at it, you would see that x would have to be 2 because 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. And so this is a true statement. The next one, for each real number x, 3x plus 5 is equal to 5x plus 1. Is this a statement? Well, it's very similar to the one before it. It says for each real number x, 3x plus 5 is equal to 5x plus 1. Another way you could think about this is for each. It's often often read for every, or it means for every. So it's saying for every real number, this happens. It's a statement. We can assess the truth value of it. And um, you can probably see that it's a false statement because if suppose we let we let x be equal to zero, then you would have five equal to one, which is false. So it's a false statement. The last one here: solve the equation two x squared minus three is equal to four. So this is not a statement. This is telling you to do something, um, but it's not. There's not. There's no truth value to assess here, and so not a statement. No. So these are just some very basic examples. Um, if you uh, look in your book, there's probably many more examples, and you could always talk to your professor about this as well. So the important thing is a statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. So how do we decide if a statement is true or false? Um, typically, what you'll do uh, throughout your, your, your course um, is you're going to be exploring um, various proofs. And so you'll, you'll end up having a lot of scratch work, a lot of exploration. You'll be using prior knowledge. You'll be using algebra techniques and so on to make a conjecture about the statement that you're analyzing. And so you rarely ever start with a mathematical proof. You're always going to start by exploring the problem, making a conjecture, and then writing the mathematical proof. And so I'm going to show you how you would do that um, with one of these problems. And so I'm going to do number two. I'll show you the exploration part. Um, 
and then the conjecture part and the mathematical proof. And so this second uh, second problem here, it says there are integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. Um, do you think that's true? Well, typically you're going to start off by exploring these problems. You, you want to investigate whether they're true or not. And so what I would do on the top of my paper, if this was a homework problem, I'd write exploration or maybe I'd write scratch work. And so this is where I'm going to do most of my exploring. And so we want to know if there are integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. Um, and when I first saw this problem, the way that I broke it down was, okay, we need, the idea is that we need some combinations of, some combination of 2 and 5 that gives us 41. Okay, well, I know that 41, I can break that up into 20 plus 21, right? Okay, and I know that 21, I can get, uh, I can get by multiplying 3 times 7, or if I had three sevens. And I know I can get 7 because I have a 5 and a 2 here, right? So that's, that's the same as 5 plus 2, that's 7. And so, okay, well, we need 3 of these. So if I had 1, 2, and 1, 5, that gives me 7. I need 3 sevens. I need, so I need 3 twos and 3 fives. That would give us the 21 here. But we need 20 more to get that 41. And so how could I get that 20 more? Well, I need four more fives. So if we have seven fives and three twos, that would satisfy the equation. These are integers. Remember, integers are uh, positive or negative whole numbers. So we're not talking about fractions or decimals or you know anything like that. It has to be an integer. And so I just found, okay, if I had three twos, so two times three plus seven fives, five times seven, that's equal to 41, because 6 plus 35 is equal to 41. So that was my exploration of the problem. Um, by doing a bunch of scratch work, I've shown that, um, or I can make the conjecture that it's true. So now I would write the mathematical proof. And so how, what would that look like? And so um, each instructor is going to have a different style. Um, I know my instructors, I had three, I had three uh, major um, mathematics instructors that would always, you know, kid each other about how they wrote proofs, and they'd always give each other a hard time, you know, because each one thinks that, you know, they write proofs better and so on. Anyhow, um, you're going to you're gonna have to develop your own style, and typically uh, a lot of students, they follow the style of their favorite teacher. And so um, no doubt my writing is probably um, very similar to uh, one of my favorite professors. And so no matter what professor you have, you're almost always going to start off with proof. And then you have to state the givens and what you're doing. And so in this problem, it says there are integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. Um, there's not really any givens, except uh, we're just trying to see if this is true. So I would start the proof off with proof. We need to show that there exists integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. And so there are various um, writing techniques when it comes to proofs, such as, you know, don't ever start a sentence with an equation. Um, keep symbolism to a minimal. Some instructors, they use a lot of symbols in their proofs. Um, it's not very formal, um, so I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Uh, there will be a few exceptions, and we'll we'll get to that later. So I start off with, we need to show that there exists integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. Then I would say, okay, if x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 7, then we have, and then this is where I would show the equation. I would say, okay, then we would have 2 times 3, and actually you could write this along the same line since there aren't very many steps, so you would, you'd say you, had, you could write 2 times 3 plus 5 times 7 is equal to 6 plus 35, which is equal to 41. So we've just, we've basically just showed it. Hence, 
hence or therefore. You could say or therefore, or you could say therefore if you wanted. Hence, there are integers x and y such that 2x plus 5y is equal to 41. And then you would end your proof with either QED, that's pretty old fashioned, or you can do a square box, or you could fill that box in. It just kind of depends on the instructor. And so I admit that this isn't very formal, it looks kind of messy. Um, we'll, do some, we'll do some more uh, formal writing later on. I just wanted to show you the process. And so this is the type of stuff you're going to be doing in your proof class, and especially if it's a beginner's proof class, which is what this content is uh, focused on. Um, you'll be just developing your writing and then doing basic proofs. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if any, any questions, leave them in the comments section. Um, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.